In this video, I show you how to create a trading plan and understand any price chart. So I'm starting here with the Euro Swedish Krona on the daily time frame, but you can basically do this with any market, any time frame. And what I am always doing first is that I look for, okay, where is the price currently? Obviously the price is currently right here. And let me move this into the frame. And then what I do is I look for two to three support areas below the price. And I look for two to three support and resistance areas above the price. And this often gives me already a good indication of what is happening and where the important boundaries are. So here it stands out quite obvious. Um, so first of all, let's look for support below the current price. Let me get rid of this. So we need to obviously have this as our first um, area here. It is the current swing low. And if you hover the mouse over, you can see that if we go back, this has been an important area even in the past. You can see that we have a touch point here, here as resistance, here, <clears throat> here is a little bit messy, and here once again. Um, this is just the first um, attempt. We will go down to the lower time frames shortly and fine tune it. Obviously, here is then the next one below the current price. Here, a very, very important uh, support area that caused this huge um, uptrend. So we need to have it on our charts. And if we go back, we can see this hasn't been that important in the past. Here, we have some type of reaction. So if we adjust the level uh, roughly to capture the low here and the high here, we should be good. So those are my two support levels below the current price. Let's look for resistance above the current price. And the first one that stands out is this swing low. So let me use my tool here. And you can see if I hover my mouse over, you can see, okay, there seems to be some confluence in the past as well. So here the first time, here it was a little bit messy, but still okay. Here we have a break and a retest. Here very precise. And then here we need to look at the lower time frame to see what has happened here. And then the last one, we can go for the high over here, which has been also very important in the past. Can see that here it has been created a major turning point. If you see major turning points, they should always be mapped on your charts. So the market went from a downtrend to an uptrend here from an uptrend to a downtrend. And those turning points, they can be very important here as well, um, here and here. So the, the support and resistance area that you want to draw, um, they should be very, very obvious. You don't need to get lost in the nitty gritty. Is this one, is this one here and there? Hmm, maybe not, I don't know. Uh, if you have to think too long about a support and resistance area, then it's usually not a good one. So that is a good rule of thumb. And what I do next is that we can go to the 12 hour, for example. I understand that the 12 hour is not um, available for all of you. It is exclusive to TradingView Pro, I think, but uh, we can also directly go to the four hour, for example, which you all have on your charts and in your platform. And then we can look at the levels um, a little bit deeper and we can see, okay, what has happened here? This level was good here. Okay, here we broke and retested it. So this is still a fair level here. Good. All the levels still look good. Can we find another one that we have missed? I don't think so. <clears throat> There's nothing uh, important anymore. So let's zoom in a little bit and get a closer uh, look. So what else should we have on our charts? We should have this on our charts probably. This is a so-called supply zone. Why a supply zone? Because this is the origin of a strong and sudden breakout. Uh, and those are then the, the or and the origins are called supply zones, obviously. Uh, where there has been a lot um, selling going on. First of all, during the first uh, part of this zone, the, the buyers and the sellers were roughly equal um, in strength. And then suddenly something has happened here that caused the sellers to completely take over and push out all the buyers. So this is a supply zone above the current price. Here, interestingly, and this will happen very, very often, the support, uh, the support area below the current price so this support area is also a demand. Why a demand? You can see it that here first we had a sideways movement, sideways phase, and then something has happened here. It can be news driven. Um, it doesn't matter. Something has happened that caused all the sellers to um, withdraw and the buyers completely took over, uh, caused this huge spike and then this uptrend. 
So clearly, clearly a very, very important market as well, uh, level as well. So um, a support area and a demand area. So I think we are good to go. Those are the important levels uh, that we need to have on our charts. So I want to go one deeper to the two hour time frame and look at price patterns and scenarios. And let me move this away. So what can we see? What do we have currently? Currently, when we just look at this, we can see, okay, the market is clearly in a sideways range where we have a very well-defined um, area here at the top. When we zoom in, you can see that the previous support has become resistance two times. We had multiple failed breakout attempts. So the market revalidated the level two times here. It tried to break out, but um, didn't uh, make it. To the downside, we can see that uh, we had this double bottom and then here we are starting to make uh, higher lows. So this could be the early stages of a so-called triangle or wedge or whatever you want to call it, doesn't matter. The idea behind the pattern is always what is important. And you can see that obviously we have a contraction uh, and a consolidation phase where the market is just going sideways. Um, and I call those areas or those phases neutral because while well, they're neither bullish nor bearish, a downtrend would be bearish, an uptrend would be bullish, but as long as the market is moving sideways between very well-defined boundaries, um, we just have a neutral market phase where nothing is going on. So what is, the, what is the game plan now? What are we going to do with this? And there are a few trading scenarios that I could think of uh, right now. So I think a breakout would, to the upside, we need to be first aware of this area here, obviously. It has been previously uh, very, very um, important. And if this succeeds, then the, the next logical and the ultimate target for a short-term trade could be the, uh, the supply zone here. So if the market uh, breaks out successfully and, what is important, closes above this area, then we could <clears throat> start um, thinking about a long trade and targeting the supply area. Why the supply area and not this one? The first um, rule that I have for my supply and demand strategy, it's called, or a principle that is called supply and demand stacking. And when I see multiple um, supply and demand levels on top of each other, I usually go for the higher one. The market has a tendency to go to the highest uh, supply and demand level that it can reasonably um, reach. So I, I would not worry too much about this level here. Let me actually adjust this for this matter. So in my own trading, I wouldn't worry too much about this level here. I would directly just say, okay, um, if the breakout happens, I would go here. And this is a very, very important mindset exercise because in the beginnings of my trading, I remember that paralysis by analysis was always a very, very um, uh, big problem because I was drawing levels everywhere and then I was always scared, will the market bounce here? Or is, is this too far? Um, should I skip the trade because um, the market will likely run into the resistance? And over the years, and I've been doing this for more than 12 years now, I realized that yes, you can draw levels pretty much everywhere, but um, just not being scared of support resistance uh, that much is important. Here, there's a lot of steam um, building up, a lot of pressure building up. And once the breakout happens, usually the breakouts happen quite violently that you don't need to be worried about every little line on your charts. So we could um, have a bullish scenario where you target this as a first target and then uh, look for an additional target if the market moves uh, strong um, here. To the downside, this is a little bit more tricky because, well, what are you going to do? Are you going to trade the breakout of the trend line, which I don't advise. Trading um, trend lines is usually a little bit more dangerous. And in this case, you have a very, very important area. So in this case, this level, yes, it's kind of important, but not as much. But here you clearly have a very, very strong um, demand and support area. So in this case, I would advise waiting for a confirmed breakout below the previous low where you can see, okay, we have a confirmation and a continuation. And then you could think about even targeting maybe the absolute lows here of this uh, origin. So this is pretty much how I would approach my charts. And then the only thing you need to do is map, um, put your price alerts. The first price alert goes here. The other price alert goes under the, the bottom. Um, and then pretty much you just wait what happens, which price alert gets triggered first. 
and in the meantime you don't need to do anything and you can repeat this for all of your forex pairs it's a nice little exercise obviously there will be many many different types of those um, patterns um, they can be head and shoulders rectangles double tops failed breakouts um, spikes traps um, i trade roughly 10 to 12 different patterns also not always will the breakout succeed obviously sometimes you will have a retest and then the retest becomes a pattern in and of itself so there are many many ways how you could approach this um, this scenario and get into a trade if you think this is interesting check the link in the description below where you find the complete um, strategy from me and you can learn how i do this uh, every single day and how i've been doing this for the last 12 years and um, uh, we don't use anything other than naked charts supply and demand support and resistance price action momentum analysis and price flow and then you can really understand any market not only forex but you can also use this for futures commodities cryptos and even stocks and make sure to leave a comment as well below the video to let me know how you like this video if you would like to see more in the future or if you didn't like it let me know as well have a good trading week and I hope to hear from you.